this is x sub k, this one's got to be x sub k minus 1. It just stands for the previous cut. What we're going to do is, within this solid shell, we're going to make another cut. An arbitrary point, how do we call our arbitrary points? What do we label them? xk dot. Look, I'm, I'm trying to make this so you understand it from the area idea. This was like x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub k, whatever it was. And we took an arbitrary cut in here, xk dot. You remember that? If we take an arbitrary cut in there, we're going to make a cut at xk dot, but that cut's going to go all the way around our figure. Don't zone out now. Don't zone out now. Now here's the key to doing this appropriately for us. We have to choose xk dot to be the midpoint of that interval. You'll see why in a second. So make a cut at, at xk dot, which is going to be the midpoint of our section. Can you tell me something? In relation to x k, x sub k and x sub k minus 1, what's a midpoint? It's, say it again? Average. We're going to use that in a second. Would you agree that if I put x k dot right in the middle of our section, it's the average of those two numbers, no matter what they are? You follow me on this? Okay, so this is, this is basically the average. Average. Okay. Only two more things we have to do. What is the thickness? What's the thickness from here to here? It, 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 it's xk minus what? No, xk dot, that would give you xk1. xk minus 1. Very good. Yeah, that's, that's right. By definition, hey, what, what's the thickness of any cut? Come on now, people. Think back. Think back. What's the thickness of your cut? Delta x. Remember delta x? We took a thickness of our cut, it was always delta x. The thickness of our cut here is delta x, and we're revolving that delta x around. Delta x, by definition, is x sub k minus x sub k minus 1. That's what it is. So this is delta x. Thickness is delta x. Now we can actually talk about height. I left it here as h for height. But I want to talk about what the height is at xk dot. Notice how I can't, look, I couldn't really, I want to be accurate, I couldn't really give you f of x here because I can't tell you, I can't tell you what the function is, the height of the function is of this whole thing. But as soon as I pick an arbitrary point, as soon as I pick that exact point, can you tell me the height of that exact point? That's the difference. So as soon as I pick xk dot, how much is our height? Very good. Yeah, height is f of x k dot. <coughs> Sweet. Love it. You know what? We're almost done. Almost done. Let's look at what we wanted to find. And you said you understood this, right? At least you said. Hopefully you didn't lie to me. 2 pi, constant. We're going to have it. Average radius, that's this, OK. Do we have something that represents the average radius up here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in fact, if you think about what the radii are, they are xk and xk minus 1, the average of which must be xk dot, the midpoint of that interval. We chose it to be the midpoint for a reason, so that we could come down here and say 2 pi is going to be there. Average radius, xk dot. Yep. That is the average radius times height. Height. 
we now know that as soon as we pick that, that arbitrary point, which happens, has to be in the middle of it, okay, it's, I guess it's not so arbitrary anymore. As soon as we pick the midpoint of it, we can find the height at that little cutting, the little cutting within uh, the like, cylinder of, co of, can of coffee cake, something like coffee, coffee can, cake, whatever. Uh, the, that little cylinder of cake, we can go right in the middle of that, we can find the height of the function at that point. Do you follow me on that? So the height is f of xk dot. And the thickness, well the thickness by definition is just the thickness of our cut. The thickness of our cut revolved around the whole thing, revolved around the y-axis, the thickness of this piece then has to be delta x. That's not our formula. That's our formula for one individual shell of x sub k. That's one of them. How do I find all of them? No, not yet. Not a limit yet. This is one of them. How do I find more of them? I add them all up. Yes. This is one shell. This is an approximation for all the shells. Approximation for all the shells. How do I find the exact, the exact volume? As what? Good. Yeah, it says basically take that coffee can and make up an infinity number of them. Where they go out just a teeny little little bit. What happens when you take a limit of a sum? What do you get out of that? Integral. That's what it is. So we have volume is an integral from where, wherever our, our integral starts, our interval starts A to B. 2 pi. What happens to xk dots when I, when I take limits? What do they become? Random arbitrary. Random arbitrary points become actually just a representation for all x's, x. So f of xk dot becomes not, not x, f of x, yes. And what do delta x's become? This is called the method of shells. Also, please note, it's perfectly appropriate to do this around the other axis. But you're going to note one thing. Please walk, this is where people make just big mistakes. I'll try to make it real clear. It's kind of like the punchline for us. We have a few minutes left, but it's kind of like the punchline, okay? When we did shells and washers, the axis upon which you revolve, like the x-axis, is the terms in which your function must be. So in order to go around the x-axis, you had to have in terms of x, y-axis in terms of y. Look what happens here. It switches. This is around the y-axis. It's got to be in terms of x. Okay. Around the x-axis would be in terms of y. Look it. We're revolving this around the y. It's still in terms of x. We never switched variables. So please make sure your notes are correct. This is for, I'm not making a mistake here. This is, this is, kind of counterintuitive. This is what this is correctly, OK? I'm not making a mistake. I'm doing this deliberately. This is around the y-axis. This one is around the, the x-axis. True story. True story. Now, did you understand it? Yeah. I'd like to set one up for you. Just one. 
you'll find out that they're, they're not too hard to set up. I, I, I want to make sure you see it before you go, because it's all been theory today, and it hasn't been anything substantial. Well, it's been very substantial, but not anything concrete. I want to give you a concrete before you go. Can you guys hang on for a minute? Man, that was a lot of work. A lot of work. Find the volume of the region enclosed by y equals the square root of x. x equals 1. x equals 4, which are vertical lines, revolved around the y-axis. <clears throat> First question I have for you. Since we're revolving around the y-axis with this method, cylindrical shells method, is this OK or not? Around the y-axis. OK or not? In terms of x means your terms are x's. Solve for y. OK, maybe this way. Around the y, solve for y. Around the x, solve for x. Okay. In terms of x, in terms of y, different. So is this appropriate for around the y with this cylindrical shells method? Would it be appropriate for, for uh, disks or washers? No, no, it's different. It's like backwards. So be very careful on that. Now, we'll set this up. Here's what this says to do. The volume is integral from, where do we start? Um, one to four. X equals one, it's going line. Going around. One to four. They're clapping for me. <laughs> good. What goes in inside? Come on, help me out real quick. Two pi. Two pi. Look at what happens. Look what this says. It says x. No matter what, you're going to have an x there. So you just tack on an x. Then it says f of x. What's f of x? And then? So this is the integral from 1 to 4. We'll pull out the 2 pi. Let's do that. We have x times square root of x dx. How do you do that integral? x times the square root of x dx. What would you do? Exponents. Yeah, exactly. So 2 pi x times x to the 1 half power dx. 2 pi. Hopefully you can do this in your head. We have a 1 and a 1 half. This would be 3 halves. Is the integral really hard? No. Set up. Just set up. 1 to 4. We've got 2 pi. The integral would be x to the 5 halves over 5 halves from 1 to 4. Simplify a little bit. You're going to have 2 pi times 2x to the 5 halves over 5. Here's probably how I would do this. I would take the 4 pi over 5 out of it. And I'd just worry about the x to the 5 halves from 1 to 4. Notice I'm taking the 4 over 5 